thing apart, this Jayhawk doesn't have much chance up there among these fans. He's been walking in front of this crowd, just letting them take a look at it. These kids have been foaming at the mouth, and I gotta believe that Pinata is not long for this world. Willie the Wildcat's got some fun ideas. This is a great student section, and they're having a lot of fun with that Jayhawk, guys. Well, they need to help out their football team because another penalty, Rayer's punt, is taken by Gordon. Good coverage, but then a penalty is thrown, and I believe it might be a... Oh, I'll just wait and see, but I think it's on K-State near the 31-yard line. Well, Josh, stay on that pinata. Get a couple pieces of candy and send them <laughs> up for the bill. <laughs> he likes a little snack every now and then. A little face mask penalty going against the coverage team. Well, we mentioned, well, we'll let him sort it out here. Mark Magina looks on as we Thanks, wait. Man. On the kicking team, five yeah. yards, first down. So, nothing intentional there. You know, we tried to get in our Kansas keys we did earlier. How about our Kansas State keys and brought you by Polaris? Well, I want them to regain focus. They need to do that from OU, but that has not happened so far today. They get back to balance, thrown and run the football. Still haven't got that going. They need to get in the quarterback bag. Well, we've gotten to the second quarterback here for KU, but... I don't know if that's been the most effective thing or not, or they just been missed here. Luke finds a man wide open. The 40-yard line, Simmons, 30. And then knocked out of bounds by Garvin, but not until he was able to ramble down inside the 20-yard line. It looks like the 17 or 18 before he was pushed out. And Simmons, you see what a model of consistency he has been at the wide out for the Jayhawks. Well, this is just a poor job of tackling on the outside. You're going to have Simmons get to the top of the side of the picture here and take a look at the quarterback. He's going to throw it out to this area and watch the missed tackle right on the sideline. That's what allows him to go down the sideline and cannot do that in the secondary. Brian Ball won the cornerback, missed the tackle, and he's up another 20 yards. 50 yards on the play, and now they keep it on the ground, and Archer makes the tackle on the play for Kansas State against Cornish. You know, they've stretched the, the, the offensive line here and run a little bit inside. Last series, they ran the ball a couple of plays, got some positive yardage. I think that's something that Kansas needs to do. They need to, you know, be committed to the run game. I think they can run the ball against K-State because they've shown on a few plays that they can. That's just that offensive line has to remain consistent with their blocks and give those backs some more to go. Second and seven as they're in the red zone again. the pitch they go up the middle to McAnderson Brandon McAnderson a sophomore from Lawrence and just one carry on the season coming in gets his first of the day here he is six foot two thirty five well, well normally when they're in the red zone these guys have been perfect they had a miscue already so far in his ball games and they had been 17 of 17 perfect in the red zone but last time down here KU did not put points on the board now with a chance here with four minutes to go in this half they're uh, inside the 20-yard line now, the 11. And a timeout is called by Kansas, and that does it for timeouts for the Jayhawks with 3.59 to go in the half. Still no score in Manhattan. cellular our network is so good it comes with a 30-day guarantee so stop doing this or this or this u.s cellular we connect with you grocery store customers like to shop where the products are best especially for beef consumers will go out of their way to find a better cut so to round up more business smart grocery chains have partnered with cargill who supplies stores with a line of top quality beef, hand selected and specially prepared, so grocers can sell beef so appealing, it'll have more shoppers blazing a trail to their store. <laughs> this is how Cargill works with customers. All businesses start out as ideas. At Shelter, the idea was simple. Offer great insurance, great performance, and great agents. That way people can concentrate on the really important parts of life. So while you're doing things like this, we manage to do this. And if you ever do something like this, it's good to know this. At Shelter, we take care of things so you can get on with your life. 
And I remind you, coming up at halftime, our Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report with the guys in L.A., Mike Goldberg, DeMarco Farr, and Billy Ray Smith. They'll catch up on scores and highlights, including that Big 12 Red River rivalry battle down in Dallas, Texas. Ranked second in the country, and Longhorns apparently taking the early lead in that game with a touchdown. No score here. There's defenders going, how do you carry the football? Yeah, check out our gang in L.A. coming up. Third and three here for Kansas. Luke in trouble. Gets out of the pocket, and it is broken up at the five-yard line. Nice job defensively by Marcus Watts, the sophomore from Hayes, Kansas. And Marcus Watts is upset that he doesn't have the interception here. He actually undercuts this throw. Brian Luke's going to work out of the pocket and watch the right side of your screen. See the break right there he's going to make on the football, and he undercuts the throw and should have had an interception right there. Looking for Brian Murph, Jr. And now Kansas trying to get on the board. They'll bring on kicker Scott Webb. Remember, the last field goal attempt was blocked. 28-yard field goal attempt. And this one is good. Scott Webb gives Kansas a 3-0 lead on a 28-yard field goal. Well, something positive in this football game for either team. That's uh, three points, at least for Kansas, a team that's actually averaging 29 points a game, Bill, on the season coming in, and just three points here in the first quarter. Pretty anemic offenses for both K-State and Kansas here early in the game, but pretty good defensive play. And the Jayhawks take the lead trio, and Kansas State, a team that came in averaging 32.8 a game, fifth in the league, 33rd in the country, has been shut out. And the Kansas defense, I mean, the way they're playing this first half, it doesn't look like they're going to need a whole lot more offensively in order to maintain today. Yeah, they've done a good job you know, against the run this season, and now really kind of squandering anything that K-State is trying to do offensively. So I think that Mark Mangino's got to be happy about his defensive play and obviously happy with five plays here getting a result of a field goal and get something on the board for his uh, Jayhawk football team. And our Hyundai scoring drive, 57 yards, five plays. The big one, the... 50-yard pass play that Simmons hauled in on the throw from Luke. And it is three to nothing. KU and the Jayhawks. We have Webb to kick it off. Herrera, the deep man on the goal line. Get an opportunity here. Will he bring it out? Yes. Ten and hammered at the 13-yard line where K-State will take over. Well, not good field position. They've had tough field position all day, and it's because they've had some problems with penalties, and they keep backing themselves up. Tackle made by Joe Mortensen, the linebacker out of Oakland, California. First down line is brought to you by Overstock.com for name brand products and clear prices. It's all about the up. Kansas State wants to get its 0-1 track right here. See if they can carry a little momentum in the locker room at halftime. They got 344. And they got uh, two timeouts to work with. So time certainly not a major factor. Clayton stands beside the quarterback. Everett, Everett, a quick look to Marrera. Picks it right off the turf and advances it to the 23-yard line, just shy of the first down. You know, Bill, what happens with these two football teams, you're, you know, we've only seen one ball even thrown down the field to try to stretch the defense. If you don't have a defensive threat where you can go throw the ball down the field, then that allows your defensive secondary to kind of crowd the line of scrimmage and put a lot of players up to defend the run. And both teams have played, you know, the run pretty well in this game. Obviously, Kansas doing a great job against the, uh, the K-State offense because they haven't been able to rush for anything. They're in negative yardage on the day. Second and two, Jordy Nelson's a deep threat. He stretched out to the top of your screen, but they keep it on the ground. And Clayton, and Bill Snyder saying, you know what? I want to get a little offensive sure. rhythm before I try anything fancy or big. Let's just see if we can get it going here a little bit. Well, they haven't been able to get any rhythm, haven't been able to run the football. When they tried to pass the ball, quarterbacks, both of them back there, Allen Webb and Allen Everidge, have had uh, been under duress because of pretty good pressure by the Kansas defense. They do a good job in the rush, you know, rushing the quarterback as well, as well as playing the run. Makes it first and 10, 27. Clock ticking, 2.48 to go. Everett got time and got a man. He dropped the football wide open at the 39-yard line. And unable to hang on was Norwood. Big Norwood, ball right into his midsection. Got to make that grab. Can't ask your quarterback to throw it any better to you. And uh, 
Everett throws it to him and got to make this grab. Stomper out of Kansas City Schlegel High School can't come up with it. And as a result, second and 10 at the 27. Nelson and Figures wide to the top of your screen. Marrera goes to the bottom. Quarterback is Everett. Going to keep it. Found a hole, 35. Rocked at the 40-yard line, but a first down. Who was he hit? Everett got hammered by Jerome Kemp. Well, when you run into the secondary, you need to get your pad level down. And I think that Allen Everett is going to learn this. You got to get down a little bit because look here. There's safeties out there that are roaming and praying on quarterback. Let's take a look at this thing in full speed. <laughs> 13 yards, he paid for it. But he moves the chain. Pretty good pop by Jerome Kemp. He's had some good hits all day today. Look at Kemp, junior out of Wichita. Southeast High School. Here's Everett on first and ten. Incomplete. Looking for Morero. Flag is thrown. Everett is down at the 35. Nick Reed contact there in the backfield on the quarterback. After he throws the football, that's the penalty. And now on Everett, he is down on the turf. Can be roughing the passer against the defense. Take a look at the outside here. Here's the ball is thrown. He leads with his head right on his chest and his chin, and that's not a smart play by a senior linebacker. You've got to pull up in that situation. Hurts your football team, and it's really not something good you want to do in a football game like this. No, you, you expect better. Reed, a senior, first team all conference pick last year, leading the Big 12 in tackles. And Big hitter, that was uncalled for. Average, and he bounces back up. Well, this rivalry, it is intense, because when K-State owned it, won 11th grade, last year KU breaks through. In basketball, Kansas has an incredible 31-game winning streak against K-State. So the Jayhawks have had a lot to brag about for the last 31 meetings in basketball, and of course, since last year in football, K-State trying to break through, get back on top in the football situation. They trail here 3-0. First and 10 at the 45 of Kansas after the penalty, though. Webb is back in, and Webb keeps the football, picks up some yards down to the 37-yard line where Kevin Kane makes the tackle. Clock just under two minutes and moving. A good job by Alan Webb, just reading his blockers here. They do a good job picking people up at the point of attack, and Alan Webb picking his way through there and getting something positive here. Coming in cold off the bench when he started the ball game. I don't know how cold he is, but uh, had a chance to watch Everidge out there perform, and now having a chance to perhaps finish his drive off with some points for his Wildcats. Second and two at the 37. Now the shotgun now, changing the play. Two on the play clock, just got it snapped in time. He got hammered as he tried to unload it. The nearest man to the football was Akeem Talib for KU. Now, they didn't do anything about Nick Reed, the linebacker, coming up on the line of scrimmage, and he gets around the blocker, and that's what Alan Webb has to deal with first and foremost. That's number seven, going to come right right through here and do a good job, get around the back. That's Clayton, can't pick up the block, and they've had pressure all day long in this K-State backfield that they've had to deal with. Linebackers, a defensive lineman, doing a good job rushing the quarterback. Timeout situation, KU is done. K-State with a couple with 116 on the clock. Ball on the 37-yard line. Officials are huddling behind the Kansas State quarterback and uh, offensive group. Well, I'm wondering if they're going to call this perhaps an intentional grounding pass a penalty because he throws the ball away, and there's really no receivers there. The receivers have broke to the middle of the field, but uh, I think they're probably going to let it go. So it'll be third down and two. So big play for K-State here because you're still not in field goal range. You're, what, 54-yarder from here. Well, what you think, need to think here is you got two downs to get the first down. Right. It's 30. You're going to go for this on fourth down. You've got to get some momentum in this football game. Clocks are coming to factor now, too. Well, wow. that's not what he wanted. KU all over it. And coming through was Rodney Allen, big number 92, the junior from Miami, Florida. 
Well, kind of like opening the floodgates here, Bill. That's what happens here with this K-State offense. You're going to have pressure come around and around and around. There's three guys that are going to converge right on the quarterback, Allen Webb, and he has nowhere to go. Trying to do the fake inside, a little, little delay draw where you're going to be the quarterback as the extra person, but looks like the Jayhawks are playing with more bodies than the, the Wildcats right now. Allen comes via Garden City Community College out in western Kansas and big playmaker there. So now fourth down and seven. Clock move at 32 seconds to go as K-State just as quickly as they think they're scoring threat. They now become in the mode of oh, wait a minute. We don't get it here. KU gets it back. We don't want to give them any time to get something going. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to punt the football here and play clock ran down. Dead ball foul, delay of game on the offense. Penalty is five yards, and it's still fourth down. Yeah, only 27 seconds left to go here in the half, so KSU not want to do anything foolish on a you know, fourth and long situation. Going to punt the football and hopefully get the defense back on the field and stop Can you come after him here? You got much to lose? Well, that's all you can do, hopefully. I don't think you you got a returner back there that can take it the distance. That's, uh, that's number three. He's pretty good. Yeah, Gordon, who's had a great one already today. Charles Gordon. Junior out of Carson, California. Hunters off by Rayer. Get away from it. And K-State will down it on the 17-yard line. And KU with just 18 seconds to play with and no timeouts. We'll see if they do anything offensively if, or if they just come out and take a knee. Yeah, I'd be surprised if he didn't see a handoff here and Mark Mangino take his football team in at half and regroup a little bit. I think both coaching staffs really have to find something that's going to work positively on the offensive side of the ball. I think both defenses, they played pretty well, particularly the Kansas defense. So the K-State defense, they played well at times, I think, Bill. But right now, you're going to see Kansas is going to take a knee here and go in at halftime. And it's going to be an interesting half though, when we come out because both teams are going to have to find something offensively that they can build around. And really hasn't been anything going for either team all day. That ends the first half as Bill Snyder looking for something to turn his club around. His cat's down 3-0 here in the, the Sunflower the State Kansas Battle for the State Governor's Zero. Cup. And KU with a web field goal, now 7 of 8 on the year. And Kansas with the lead. And let's send it down to John Radigan with head coach Mark Mangino of Kansas. Yeah, coach, obviously you got to be pleased with the lead, but maybe not pleased with all the aspects of the way the offense played particularly. Well, certainly we're not executing the way we should on offense. You know, we're making some plays, got some penalties that, you know, not smart football. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I feel good about our defense, the way they're playing. They need to continue to play that way. We just got to hit the... Uh, Get some plays on offense. Get some rhythm. Get some continuity going on offense. All right, Coach. Good luck in the second half. That is Mark Mangino. His team with a 3 nothing lead, although the way the first half went, you might think it would be more than that. The Kansas Jayhawks in the battle of the Sunflower State with a 3 nothing lead at halftime. So here at halftime, the fans will enjoy the halftime festivities. Our fans at home will enjoy the Sonic Halftime Report, and that will come your way with Mike, Billy Ray, and DeMarco. Nothing but sun and flowers amongst us here at the Sonic Halftime Report. Alongside the Hall of Famer Billy Ray Smith, the national and Super Bowl champion. DeMarco Farr, I'm Mike Goldberg, KUK State. Um, is it safe to say neither team has taken the bull by the horns yet? Not yet, but I I'm enjoying this football game. It's intriguing. All these penalties, what? all these mistakes coming up. <laughs> it's fun. It's going to be fun to see which team comes out on top. But it's, it's shaping up to be a typical K-State first half. A lot of miscues. Yeah. They pulled Allen Webb after a pick and a fumble. Mm -hmm. Bring in the backup quarterback. It's just going to be tough uh, from Kansas here on State, out. Yeah, Kansas State wanted to improve on the penalty situation. Uh, they had 11 last week, and they're, they're uh, right now at 8. So, <laughs> fellas, you might want to just stop right now. Yeah, uh, and, and, right. and web back into the football game. So, uh, revolving quarterbacks, not just for Kansas, but for Kansas State as well. Uh, coming up, the Red River rivalry. Dallas, Texas, Adrian Peterson in Oklahoma. Vince Young in Texas. Longhorns have lost five straight. We talked about it next on the Sonic Halftime Report. How is K-State ranked nationally? For the past 20 years, Kansas State has led the nation among public universities in Rhodes, Marshall, Truman, Goldwater, and Udall Scholars. Is K-State up to date technology-wise? K-State is recognized by the Princeton Review as one of the most connected campuses in the country and by Intel as one of the most wireless. What about campus life? 
dynamic, diverse, and a friendly atmosphere. Kansas State University. There are some places guys shouldn't go. Then there's Sport Clips, made just for guys, with sports on TV and stuff guys like, and none of the stuff guys don't. At Sport Clips, guys win. You know, I gotta tell you, since I've been hurt and missing work, you've been a big help to this family. No, really. The cash we get from Athlac helps us maintain the house, put food on the table, and my Jenny continues with her piano lessons. Yep, this family's doing just fine. And it's all thanks to... Aflac. Ask about it at work. This guy just went to five bowl games in one week. Of course, he forgot his sunscreen for the first two. He lost his voice by the fourth game. And the worst part of all is his girlfriend dumped him when he got back because he didn't tell her he was going in the first place. So tell me, was it worth it? Oh, yeah. Enter to win Cooper Tire's Ultimate Bowl Tour, and you and three friends could be headed to five bowl games in one week on a private jet. Go to a Cooper dealer near you or visit ultimatebowltour.com to enter. Who knows? This could be you. flavor dr pepper one taste and you get it i make my living eight seconds at a time in the world's toughest world so when i'm not battling one of these i'm riding one of these whether i'm on the trail I'm on the ranch or on the hunt ain't nothing tougher than my grizzly for a limited time, get a worn winch for just $69.95 plus low monthly financing. There are some places guys shouldn't go. And then there's Sport Clips, a place for guys where you can get a great haircut and catch the game. At Sport Clips, it's all about you. At Sport Clips, guys win. Next week on the Best Damn Sports Show, period. Together in studio, two of the all-time greats, Joe Montana and Jerry Rice. Next week at 10.30 to the Sonic Halftime Report. Kansas and Kansas State. And you know what? Bodies are being thrown around the football field. Alan Everidge rocked on this play. KU leads three to nothing to the Red River rivalry in Dallas, Texas. Adrian Peterson, he's okay. Until the trainer jumped on his back. And how about your guys, Insanity? Well, we took a poll trying to figure out what he's listening to. I'm saying Shock Nina. Shock <laughs> Nina is nice. Well, shocking no one early to Ramon Taylor. 15-yard touchdown. OU has added a field goal. Vince Young is your guy you get to talk about. Yeah, Vince Young is the guy. He's increasing his offensive input, increased it by 7%. They're adding 100 more yards to their offense production. He's getting better at the Gold Long Beer. Too many numbers for me. Uh, <laughs> Oklahoma is in the red zone, by the way, and it's a 7-3 game. Number three, Virginia Tech hosting Marshall. Watch the move by the freshman, Brandon Orr. It's just the patience. You don't see that out of a lot of freshmen getting the end zone 14-yard score. Your Hokies are really rolling along. They've won 20 straight against non-conference opponents at Lane Stadium. And Marcus Vick, he is Billy Ray's guy to Marco. Watch him. Marcus Vick, the second-best quarterback in the nation. That's Ow. not bad. No, that's from that line. I agree. Oh, number five, Florida State Wake Forest. Freshman to freshman. Drew Weatherford to the freshman wide receiver, Greg Carr. It's good to be 6'6". Six, six. Yeah, Wake on the blitz. Great oh. blitz pickup. One-on-one -on -one matchup. You out-jump them. Touchdown, Florida State. Drew Weatherford seeming to get more comfortable in that seminal offense. Well, he's got a gigantic offensive line. He's got two of the best running backs in his conference right behind him. Drew Weatherford better be comfortable. Well, he is certainly doing a great job so far. All right, guys, let's get back to the Red River rivalry. And, uh, B.R., we talked in the kickoff show, does Oklahoma have a chance to win this game? Right now, Oklahoma is in this football game. And this is all emotion. And you see this in these kind of ball games where you have the, the big rivalry go on. But 
Right now, it's motion for, for Oklahoma. It's, it, you could tell the nerves are getting to Rhett Bomar. You're throwing, he's throwing balls two yards behind receivers, just not very accurate so far. And unless he turns that around, second half is going to be all Longhorns. Yeah, you watch Rhett Bomar. He's stepping in the bucket when he throws, kind of hitting, overthrowing a few guys. But watching this game, the big buildup, Texas is number one, rushing the football. Oklahoma's number one, stopping the football. Which side of the ball is going to show up today? Right now, I have to give the edge to Texas. Texas has lost five straight. If they lose a six straight, the way they are not so balanced in many's eyes this year, well, it's going to be long days in Austin, Texas. Uh, long first half for Kansas and Kansas State. No team really able to be dominant on the offensive side, but still the crowd is going wild in Manhattan as we continue the Sonic Halftime Report. I'm like Jack's number one fan. He just gets me. Jack, it's me! Jack! I was really craving another hot sandwich on his famous toasted sourdough bread. Then he comes out with the ultimate club. Oven roasted turkey, black forest ham, bacon, which I love, cheese, lettuce, tomato, like he made it just for me. Uh, glad you like the ultimate club. Stop sending your hair sculptures. I have a stun gun. <laughs> Jack's the best. Before you answer any questions about your insurance needs, doesn't it make sense to see the insurance company's report card first? Shelter insurance looks like this. We're rated A for excellent by AM Best, the national firm that rates financial strength and operating performance. Here's more good news. Nine out of ten customers say they'd recommend us to someone else. An excellent rating and satisfied customers. Shelter insurance. What better place to look for insurance? breakthrough innovation changing the beef industry. It's called Draxel, and it's one more way Pfizer Animal Health is working with veterinarians and cattlemen to open up a whole new era in animal health. To learn more about Draxel, talk to your veterinarian. Welcome to Ranger Country, where the redesigned Polaris Ranger with available electronic fuel injection outruns, outcarries, outhauls, Pulls and outrides every utility vehicle out there. The Polaris Ranger, now with available electronic fuel injection. The hardest working, smoothest riding off-road utility vehicle you can buy. Every day, thousands of people around the Midwest count on Ford F-150 because only Ford F-150 is built for the Midwest. So whether it's delivering the maximum payload in its class or delivering your own precious cargo, one thing is certain, F-150 delivers. Right now, head over to your quality Ford store to get a great deal on the built Ford Tough F-150, the best-selling truck for the last 28 years running. Ford F-150, built for the Midwest, built Ford Tough. On Fox NFL Sunday, TV sits down with the invincible Donovan McNabb. Then, the high-powered Eagles battle Keyshawn and the Cowboys. It's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader this weekend in HD. Welcome back to the Sonic Halftime Report. Remember we told you earlier, Kansas has only allowed one rushing touchdown all season. That's tied for the fewest allowed in Division I football. They haven't allowed K-State to score at all. They lead 3-0 at the break. On the Diamond Major League Baseball playoffs, while well, the Angels will have to wait another day for their opportunity to officially eliminate the New York Yankees. The game postponed due to rain today and the Bronx rescheduled for tomorrow, 8.15 Eastern time. But for us, this is just one of four. Number one USC comes your way only on FSN, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Then it's the Boulder, Colorado, and Tempe, Arizona. Four for your pleasure today on FSN. This is the Sonic Halftime Report.
sports drinks that help you to fly, to soar, to defy gravity. But who's there to help when you hit the ground? To promote healthy knees and joints, one company wanted to make a drinkable dietary supplement. They turned to Cargill, where scientists created a good tasting liquid form of key ingredients, resulting in a solution for healthy joints that's easy to swallow. This is how Cargill works with customers. At a department store, you can get an elegant 100% wool suit for $299.99. K&G has 100% wool suits that look just as stylish for a third of that. Really? K&G has incredible savings on a wide range of fashions seven days a week. K&G Fashion Superstore. For men, for women, for less. trade we understand traders that's why we give you the tools to spot analyze and seize the market's many possibilities thank you ameritrade or internet equity trades are 1099 join now and get up to 35 free trades and a hundred dollars cash great shoes huh yeah. go to ameritrade.com spot or call 877-447-8330 is that a new sports drink an old rivalry is given new life on fsn midwest the Blues are retooled and ready to rekindle a rivalry in the Central. To make a stingy netminder, Nikolai Habibulin and the Blackhawks. Blues hockey is unleashed. Blues, Blackhawks, Tuesday at 6.30 on FSN Midwest. If there's one thing that's certain, it's that you can't split October. continues to entertain in Manhattan. Hey, Kansas's field goal that was blocked was their first red zone trip this year where they haven't scored. They were previously 17 of 17. Update from the state fair. Number two, Texas, Oklahoma. Last year, the game belonged to freshman Adrian Peterson. Well, how about freshman Jamal Charles? He spins away from some would-be tacklers, 80 yards for the touchdown, 14-6, number two, Texas. Number 14, Wisconsin at Northwestern, game tied at seven early. Look at the, the just the patience and the, the guard play out in front, getting the blocks, and the Badgers are in the end zone. Booker Stanley with the score. Number 15, Florida at home, and Deshaun Wynn gets the ball. Oh, I love the way he plays football. Watch him come out of the pocket, uh, come out of, bounces outside, gets him in the end zone. I love the way he runs the football, <laughs> BR. And in the Big Ten, number 24, Michigan, Minnesota, a good game being done so far. And you know what? Chad Henney drops back to pass, but the freshman Steve Davis gets the sack for the loss. The Gophers trying to beat Michigan, a team that always seems to ruin their seasons. Our game, K-State and Kansas. I think Bill Snyder's just about had enough, DeMarco. How about you? I, I feel bad for the guy. I mean, he's just like, we keep shooting ourselves in the foot. We don't know how good we can be because we don't give ourselves a chance. But I'm really, I'm really impressed with the KU defense. They're doing a great job. Seem to be playing more, a more physical game than Kansas State right and now. And when you have the injuries up front in that offensive line, that that K-State offensive line has suffered so far, I think what you have to do is get it really basic. Just give the ball to the running backs and let them run the football. Just like last week on FSN when OU shut out K-State in the first half, shut out in the first half again. You've been watching the Sonic Halftime Report, second half from Manhattan, right after this break on FSN.
Hey, Sean, thanks for inviting us yeah, to your daughter's you. party. Tell us. Easy, boy. You got the signal? Right up here on the seat. All right, you want some cake? It's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader this weekend in HD. Witness the baddest men on the planet. Oh, that's a big right up! The Pride Fighting Championships are on MSN. Oh, that's a tremendous battle! Featuring Kazushi Sakuraba, Quentin Jackson, Fedor Emilienko, and Ken Shamrock. If you think you've seen the ultimate in fighting, you haven't seen any. Fighting Championships, October 16th on FSN. Go to Priceline now for the best deals on hotels. Name your own price for three and four-star hotels and save up to $100 a night off other leading travel sites every night you stay. <laughs> Only at the new Priceline. Bob Ramsey here for ITD with a friendly reminder. Before you host your next tailgate party, be sure to have a bumper-to-bumper -bumper inspection of your vehicle by your independent tire dealer. For a limited time, buy three ProComp tires and get the fourth free. ProComp tires are a great choice for that big 4x4 tire look for your SUV. Your ITD dealer carries the best tire brands and has certified mechanics to keep your party going. For all of your automotive service needs, come to Price Automotive in Eureka, Missouri. The Ultimate Fantasy Football Show. Our experts will tell you everything you need to know to build a fantasy powerhouse. Thursday on FSN. Welcome back to KSU Stadium, Wagner Field in Manhattan, Kansas. Our Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week. Bill Land and Gary Reasons with you up top here. Hey, it may not be what you expected. It's certainly not been an offensive game, but you know these two are giving everything they've got with a 3-0. There's got to be some adjustments made in the second half. I think the halftime was key for both football teams. You had to make some adjustments, as you said, Bill. Neither team was able to run the football. Neither team was really gathering much offense. A lot of miscues in this football game, particularly for Kansas State. They're, they're, what they had with penalties in this football game was something that Bill Snyder could not handle very well. We'll take a look at the Draxon first half stats here as we go into this halftime. And, you know, you take a look at the rushing yardage. Only six for KSU and not much more for Kansas. 51 yards on the day. But look at the penalties here. The penalties in this situation this ball game nine penalties for 73 yards not characteristic of KSU and I think Bill Schneider needs to make some adjustments and we have a chance to talk to coach Schneider let's go down to the field with uh, John Radigan the way your defense played in the first half well I think for the most part we had three personal fouls on our defense and that that cost us a great deal of field position we gave up a couple of plays, one passing play, one run, and one little bootleg with the quarterback. Outside of that, we played very well on defense. How do you get the offense on track? Well, I, we just have to, again, not get penalized, not take those lost yardage plays. We've got to run a little harder, and we got to block better. All right, Coach, thanks very much. That's Bill Snyder, his team, trying to do all those things in the second half. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate Coach Snyder, John Radigan, and also brings the football back on the kick return for Kansas State. And they will operate first to 10 on the 32-yard line here to start this second half. And let's take a look at those K-State first half possessions, Gary. Not very impressive at all. Not very impressive for a team averaging 32 points a ball game coming into this contest. And a bunch of punts, the interception, miscues, and the penalties. They were being backed up. They had third and long all, all in the first half. It was not easy going for, for KSU. Kansas State shut out for the second week in a row in the first half. Last week, you might recall our game at Norman. They were down 19-0 at the half. And the halftime leaders, look, flew one completion for 50 yards, one of three. And take a look at Cornish, Webb, Clayton, and what's that all add up to? Three, Three points. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Scott Webb, one of two in field goals because he had the other one blocked. So the defense has been in control there, too. Second and eight at the 34-yard line. Everidge, got a little time, now strolls out of the pocket. 
and under pressure throws it over toward the K-State sideline. There was absolutely nobody open in the secondary at all for K-State on that play. And Allen Average, I don't care what he does, he's got to find a way to get rid of the football. That's the only thing to protect himself and make sure it's not a negative play for his offense because the Kansas defense just gobbled up every receiver in the pattern. So, third and eight. Ball at the 34 to start this second half. And the other thing Kansas has done by playing such stout defense, they've wiped out the crowd, Gary. The crowd exactly hasn't been right. a factor at all. And sellout house here at KSU. Most folks will tell you it's up to our players and our team. We've got to get our crowd going. Everett unloads again at no time as Fickers was the intended receiver in Kansas just as dominant to start the second half defensively as they were throughout the first two quarters. Now Everett tries to adjust the play at the line of scrimmage, call an audible to get something to A, to pick up the blitz that's, that's coming from the Kansas defense and then try to find a receiver. But uh, right now, I think the Kansas defensive front, actually the defense overall, is just manhandling the offensive line for Kansas State. Rayer, who averaged... 37 yards a kick on his five first half punts. Stands on his own 21. Gordon is the deep man at the 21 of KU. He gets off a of boomer. At the 10, I don't know if Gordon saw it. He picks it up one yard deep. Five, 10, flag is thrown. 30, 40. Gordon trying to get a blocker out in front. Play whistle, though, that he stepped out of bounds at the 39, and a flag was thrown at the nine-yard line. I don't know if he ever saw that ball when it bounced. Well, look at the shadow here. You're seeing the sun come down this way. He's trying to shade, cover his eyes so he can see the ball. He cannot even see it, but finally it hits the turf, and he's, you know, it bounces up to his chest, so he catches it and makes a nice play here. But we're going to have a hold here, a penalty. The block in the back, you saw it right there. Ball's going to come back and be enforced against, uh, against excuse me, against Kansas. They live on the right side of your screen here. You're going to see the block come in from the right side right there on Siler and knock him out of the way so he can't make the play. 66-yard punt by Rayer. An illegal block in the back. A number 40 of the return team. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul, and it will be a first down. We'll look at Kansas' first half possessions here. I don't know if Gordon is going through that sun. He obviously didn't realize where the football was. Well, he kind of lost position of where he was on the field after the ball bounced. He backed up. Normally, you've got a 10-yard line rule on the punt returner. He kind of got confused on where he was, got back into the goal line. So, KU operating from a deficit. And just trying to look for some running room. Cornish is stopped by Alfonso Moran. Sean Cornish. As well, Bill, I really think that if either, either team's offensive line can really pick up the pace, they'll have a chance to win this ball game. You've got to be able to get some consistency. A, moving the ball on the ground, running the football. And you can't make these quarterbacks try to win ball games for you right now because they just don't have the skill level to receive a position and they don't have the consistency with the quarterbacks. We've talked about, we've seen four quarterbacks in this game, John. Radigan talked about earlier this game, we might even see six quarterbacks in this game because there's a lot of indecision in regard to what's going on with these quarterbacks. Here is Luke. He did not start the game. Starts the second half. The ball is fumbled and picked up by Kansas State. Cornish coming out with it and recovering the football. Brandon Archer. I think it's K-State, the ball bouncing around there. Cornish never got a handle on it. I think Brandon Archer was the one who came in on top. Number 46 for the for the K-State defense. This is a big play. This is what they need, a little momentum here, a little option play, and he pitches it to him well, but he never really gets a handle on it, bounces off the turf a couple of times and never got a handle on Watch 46 come in there, Brandon Archer, and make that play for the Wildcats. Sims 45 recovered it, Gary, instead of Archer. They're both right there. They give him credit, I think, to Sims, though. We'll see here. Point is, K-State, great opportunity. Clayton wrapped up near the 20, down to the 18-yard line. And again, 
can up KU's defense is in a real hole to answer. That's the exact same play that Kansas ran offensively. The Kansas State turned around and run the option down the line. And the K the Kansas defense is so good against the run. Good assignment there on the option play. You come down, you take away the pitch, you take away the quarterback. No nothing there for Clayton to do to run through and good job of tackling there inside. Second and 14, and again, nothing doing. Uh, Kansas State, well, Kevin Kane again, last two plays now, he has zeroed in on the running back, and that's Clayton, nowhere to go with that football. And talk about rushing TDs allowed. Kansas, only four rushing TDs allowed this season. That's, uh, and that's going back to 04 yeah. of October. For, they've only given up one yeah, on the one ground this one, year. One this yeah. year, and four since October of, of 2004. They held Texas Tech to 47 yards rushing. And I know Tech is primarily a throwing team, but that's the third time a team's been held under 100 yards this year. And again, Barrera gets nothing on this play as Reed is there. And on a third and 15, K-State fans starting to boo a little bit. And it was the same play they ran in the first half where I talked about them outnumbering the defense at the point of attack. And you bring Morera with an unbalanced line here around the backside. But the defense adjusts and they get in the backfield. Nick Reed and company just really not giving these J, excuse me, these Kansas State Wildcat running backs anywhere to go. And Morera with his speed, not even a chance to get around the corner. So it's a 38-yard attempt for Jeff Snodgrass. Four of six in field goals. He's hit from 57 yards. A chance to tie it up here. And he does. So we're even at three. Snodgrass and Webb, the two kickers, have put the points on the board. 3-3, KU, K-State. In 1874, an innovation changed the beef industry forever. It was called barbed wire, and it brought an end to open range grazing and began a whole new era of cattle management. Today, there's another breakthrough innovation changing the beef industry. It's called Draxon, and it's one more way Pfizer Animal Health is working with veterinarians and cattlemen to open up a whole new era in animal health. To learn more about Draxon, talk to your veterinarian. Chili cheese fries are making me full. I don't have to finish them. Just... Charlie? Mm -hmm. What the? Wow. Who's this guy? Calling in a sub. How long has he been sitting in the back of my car? It's always back there. Always back there? Yeah. Cherry limeade, buddy? I thought he was a buddy of yours. Game day food. Nothing goes better with sports than Sonic's Chili Cheese Fries, the official food of armchair quarterbacks. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week on FSN is brought to you by Dr. Pepper. One taste and you'll get it. By Sport Clips, where guys win. By Whataburger, just like you like it. And by Overstock.com, your online outlet. It's all about the O. Bill Land, Gary Reason, John Radigan, and crew with you here in Manhattan. A sunny afternoon where the sun has been shining primarily on the defenses, though, as Kansas State has tied it up on Snodgrass field goal from 38 yards. He'll now kick it off here as Hagens is back again for the Kansas Jayhawks on the kick. Well, it wasn't real pretty for Kansas State offensively there after the fumble recovery, but the result is they got points on the board, Bill, and I think it's what Bill Snyder would like to have. Just get something positive happen for his football team and... Well, they could kick the ball out of bounds, so that's not yeah. something good to come back with a negative play, so. Well, our Hyundai scoring drive uh, is somewhat of a negative. Why? Because KU's fumble in the red zone is what set up the lack of scoring drive. They went in reverse for seven yards and then got bailed on the field goal. I don't blame, they were booing here, probably because they didn't throw Breaking on third down. 
on the kicking team. Ball of place at the 30-yard line. First down. I don't blame Bill Snyder at all. He's saying, let's tie the game up. Our, we'll get our offense on track. Let's take advantage of the turnover. If we start a throw, we may get sacked again. I want to start all over Eden. And that's what they do now. First and 10. Ball at the 35. Luke's pass got tipped and in, uh, incomplete. Archer thought he had the interception. George, though, got a deflection of it. Sierra's George, a senior from Spring Lake, North Carolina. I'm not sure Cornish even saw the football come over his head or he comes back for the over for the screen pass and Luke tosses it out there. A little tip there. You see the tip? Good job there. Tierra's George and almost tipped it up one of his linebacker buddy. Yeah, Archer was diving for the play. Here's a look at George. His pursuit sets up a second and ten at the 35 for Kansas, says Brian Luke, the quarterback. And he gives to Cornish. And Cornish fighting his way and across the 40 to the 42-yard line before he is brought to the turf. Good job inside here running. Get a little blocking and just tough running to get the last three or four yards of this play. Now, this is a manageable third down here. Third down, about three yards to go, Bill. So, you know, Kansas has a chance to convert here and get some positive things going for their football team. Third and three at the 42. Cornish is over the 50-yard mark and rushing now. It's another carry. Oh, I beg your pardon. The fake to him and Luke. Make the K-State defense out as well as this announcer. It's down to the 45-yard line. Pretty nifty run in there for Luke. Fakes the handoff inside and kind of goes behind his, his guard and center. And see the K-State defense did run a little stunt here. So that takes that defensive end away. And so there's nobody there. And then Siler's looking, hey, there's the ball. <laughs> he lost him. Focus on where the football was. First and 10 at the 45 of the Wildcats. Now Cornish. A yard or two to the 40. Four yard line, maybe a little further. Archer was there to stop it. Well, this, this play seemed like they're getting slow. You got the backside guard and tackle pulling around, and they're standing straight up, and they're not keeping their weight down and forward coming around, Bill. So these backs are running right up in the back of That's a timing thing that the offense has to work on to get your offensive line in sync with your running back and your, your plate, your, your face back there. Right now, it looks like these running backs are running right into their offensive line. Second and nine at the Kansas State 44-yard line. Three wide outs to the top of your screen. Instead, they come back to Cornish, who is stumbling, but pretty good gain. It gets across the 40 to the 38-yard line. Now, Marcus Watts makes the tackle. Watch Maurice Mack. He comes right up here and actually runs right by the running back and needs to make this tackle. And whoop, a little bit too far. It's a big old hole to get through. And good job of running straight north and south by Cornish. Man, carried it, got him another yard or two. Sets up a third and three at the 38. K State had just scored a field goal. KU now in this possession. The 38 of the Wildcats. Luke on the option. Just diving in for what he wants to get the first down, but where they're spotting the football, I don't think he's going to have it. Yeah, he's going to need to get just over the 35 yard line, and they're going to spot the ball shy of the 35. So it's going to bring up a fourth down here for Kansas. Mark Mangino having to make a decision here. And looks like he's going to leave his offense out there on the field. And you got a 53-yard field goal in you. I think everything at this point for these two coaches becomes more conservative than ever because you're just trying to not make a mistake or allow the other team an opportunity for a big play. Yeah, the crowd gets into it. Keeper by the quarterback, Luke. It will be very close. The long carry is number 14, Brian Luke. K-State says we've held him. That's well, all with the spot and wherever they put that football down and they're spotted short of the 35-yard line. Mark Mangino not happy at all with the spot. Let's take a look here. Let's take a look at Luke's progress and looks like his Probably a pretty good spot. 
there's really no way to tell where he's at, but the, the K-State defense, that, that wall created right there, good job by the linebacker stepping up and defensive lineman getting low, and Luke has nowhere to go with that ball. First down at 10, 35 yards. Mark Mangino, and no way, you gotta be kidding me. But K-State gets it back. So now the Wildcats defense holds, and it's first and 10 at the 35 for KSU. Quarterback Everett delivers to Nelson. Nelson took a similar type play last week for 73 yards and a score against Oklahoma. Jordy's a sophomore from nearby Riley, Kansas. Came in leading receiver with 14 and yardage with 249. And he's been a bright spot for this football team, catching the football. and. Four touchdowns on the year, Bill. And he's got the, he's that big play threat kind of a guy. He's got enough speed to stretch the defense. One of the fastest guys on this Wildcat football team. Yeah, he can fly. And three there. Good wrapping up job by KU defensive. Second and seven for Kansas State. And Everett keeps the football. I think it's smothered near the 43-yard line. Kevin Kane leading the charge. And I've seen a lot of guys spin it. You know, you, you spin at the line of scrimmage, and all, all, the, all what happens is somebody can come around. When you spin, you give your body up in your chest, and take a look here. You can have somebody pop you right there. Kane almost got a pretty good pop on him. We're 45 in the middle linebacker. Kansas State calls a timeout here with 6.38 to go in the third quarter. The Wildcats and the Jayhawks nodded at three apiece. We'll check out Everett when we come back. A lot of reflection and soul searching went into this decision. So it is with great excitement that I announce my commitment to Fox College Sports. Reggie, 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 do you deny that you receive over 800 live college events? Let's just say it's going to look mighty nice on my 52 inch widescreen. <laughs> to order Fox College Sports, call 1 877 2GET FCS. The 10 year anniversary, all season long on FSN. Watching the Dr. Pepper Big 12 game of the week, 3 3 our score, Kansas and Kansas State. Bill Lamb, Gary Reese, and John Radigan with you. I want to honor our Suzuki student athlete of the week. And he goes Jeremy Clary, offensive lineman, not only a star on the field, but in the classroom, the national scholar athlete candidate. He's trying to help his teammate quarterback Allen Webb who just came back in the game for the injured average that was third down and about three and he didn't get anything close to that good job by the Kansas defense of not allowing him any room inside he tried to break it around the around the edge and I have a couple of helmets together here Kemp making the tackle not sure of the average injury that was I think why the timeout was called Gary because he was banged up they tried to see if he could go pulled him out and here at Kansas State, they do not release any injury information during a ball game, so we'll have to observe on our own and do the best we can to guess. Staying loose on the sideline and stretching and trying to take a couple of shots today. I don't know exactly what's going on with him, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it. Rayers punt on a fourth and three. Gordon dancing at the 22. And punt at the 19-yard line. You see, you see Derek Gordon with his hands on the ball. We talked to Mark Mangino about him and about whether he was actually going to play on the offense a little bit today because he's done so in the past. And 
He said they tried to get him over there for a few plays, and they like to put the ball in his hands. Archer made the tackle that time. Hey, later today, our college football quadruple header continues. Arizona battles top-rated USC. Big Pac-10 showdown. The Trojans trying to stay undefeated. Coverage begins after our game, only on FSN. Yeah, talk about a triple threat. They've got it for the Trojans. Liner to crew. First to 10. Ball on the 19 for Kansas. We're knotted at three each. And off to Cornish. Cornish near the 22. He's a little slow to get up. Eccles and Sims there to make the tackle. Our first down line brought to you by Overstock.com, your online outlet. It's all about the O. Second and seven, 23 Second and seven at the 23 now. Brian and 30 to go in the quarter. Well, Brian Luton now a chance to run this offense. Adam Barman started the game for Kansas. Rotation of quarterbacks on both teams in this ballgame. Both coaches begging for consistency, neither getting. Cornish, nice run across the 30, but a flag in the backfield. Usually indicates holding. A false start on number 29. It's five yards and still second down. No wonder he got such a good thrust. <laughs> <laughs> it took off too soon. You can do that in arena football, move forward before the snap, but not here. Well, Mark Regino going to wait a minute. It was K-State that had the nine penalties in the first half, and now KU hurts itself. Their turnover by Cornish is what set up K-State's only points. Field goal that came by Snodgrass. As a result here, it is second and 12 for the Jayhawks. Second and 12, 18-yard line. And the 18-yard line. Luke hands it off to Cornish. Nothing doing on the left side of the line. Well, Bill, I talked about offensive line play. You need to be able to get your offensive linemen in sync to get your running game going. And really need a team, I think, has been successful doing that. And the guy who's got to really take charge up there is your center. That's David Ochoa, in this case, for Kansas. And, and I think the center is key. And you've got to be able to get your guys rallied and get them in the right position. Those line calls that you have to make recognize the stunts and things that are going on with the defensive front. And it's a sign. Right now, Kansas State's finding some, some scenes through there and making negative plays in the backfield. Made the tackle that time and sets up third and 12. The ball at the 18. Ryan Luke had a 50 yard pass earlier. Got time, incomplete. Flags thrown again, intended for Simmons at the 25 yard line. And Sorrell Davis covering on the play there. Defending on the play number four, Sorrell Davis. Yeah, we're going to have multiple holding penalties here. and Good coverage here in the secondary. You got Casey. You got a bracket here. You got a bracket here. And one guy covered. Nowhere to throw the ball. So K State declines the penalty because it's going to be fourth and long anyway. And now you got a chance to, with Morera back there to return this punt. Good field position here for Kansas State. So you got a choice here put pressure on this punter. I think you put some pressure on him and just hopefully you force a bad kick or give Morera a chance to get you some good field position here. Yeah, you, you almost have to make something happen on your special teams because the offenses have just been dominated by the other side today. So, Kyle Tucker averaging 36 half, uh, 36 36.5 on his first two kicks of the day. Low snap. Just did get it off. Pretty good kick though. Morera. 33 as he backpedals, steps to the 31. Dancing, 35, flags again everywhere. And finally stopped at the 35-yard line. Well, right at the point of attack, you got, a, you got a penalty. You just can't do that. You go down there right at the officials are all watching right there, and you just can't go, go down there and do that. I think Justin McKinney, a defensive back who's for K-State, going to get tabbed here right in front of the returner. 49-yard kick. Inside four minutes to go here in this third quarter. KU a 3-0 leader at the half. K-State with a Snodgrass field goal to tie it up in the early part of this quarter. An illegal block in the back on number 22 of the return team. It's 10 yards from the spot of the foul, and it's a first down. So, with that good news for Bill Snyder, we'll take a brief timeout. We'll be right back in Manhattan.
Chibata. C-B-A. Chibata. C-A. Can you use it in a sentence? My new bacon and cheese ciabatta burger is made with two juicy jumbo patties covered with melting cheese, red onions, tomatoes, and four pieces of mouth-watering bacon on my lightly toasted ciabatta bread. Jay. Ciabatta. C-I-A-B-A double T-A ciabatta. Peace out. <laughs> When it comes to spending quality time with your kids, no sacrifice is too great. But when it comes to the satisfying taste of Diet Dr. Pepper, you sacrifice nothing. Diet Dr. Pepper. It tastes more like regular. Next week on the best damn sports show, period. Together in studio, two of the all-time greats, Joe Montana and Jerry Rice. Next week at 10.30... Weeknights on the best damn sports show, period. Giant sack master Michael Strahan from Doom the Movie, The Rock. Together in studio, two of the all-time greats, the 49ers dynamic duo, Joe Montana and Jerry Rice. Plus, open wheels finest driver, Danica Patrick, the Lakers, Jeannie Buss, the shifty, Sean Alexander, and best damn college football analyst, Petros Papadakis. Weeknights at 10.30. 25 three to three late in the third it's big 12 football the dr pepper game of the week and you know here in manhattan kansas they do a great job wearing the purple we call this place purpleville but it's the first time i've ever seen this purple popcorn they call it cat corn i, I gotta taste it oh no mm. oh man that's great i think it tastes better when the team is in front. Right now it's tied, so it tastes okay. I'll tell you what, it would taste great with a big icy cold Dr. Pepper, guys. Oh, yes. Thank you, John. That looks Dr. Good. Pepper game of the week. Purple cord here with young man up there at the top of the ramp. I saw him uh, marketing that. Said good things about us, and we appreciate him. Aggies, as they used to be called here. Of course, Aggieville is the big student area. For nightlife, we're out here. We had a chance to enjoy some of that last night as people were gearing up for this big game. And we expected low scoring, Gary, but yeah. I don't think we expected this one to be as mistake-filled as it's been, as it's second and seven here for K-State in the 28. And this one complete. And Nelson, the receiver, at the 33-yard line, Kemp the tackle. Well, we knew we were going to have a ball game where defense is going to play a part in it, because particularly Kansas, and their front seven is, is one of the best in the Big 12 Conference, especially against the run. And, and what they've done again in the passing game, as far as causing havoc in the K-State uh, backfield today has been pretty impressive. And now, got a chance offensively for K-State to make something positive, get something going here. I know Bill Snyder is about to pull his hair out over there because of the penalties, the miscues, and really just an inefficient offense the last two weeks. And these two defenses, two of the top 40 total defense in the nation. Nelson gets in to move the chains here as Banks Bloodman makes the tackle for Kansas. It'll be a first and 10 for Kansas State. You got Jordy Nelson in the slot. He comes up, turns back to the quarterback, and throw with the football. Nice hands grab, little low throw. First down and 10. Glad to have you with us at KSU Stadium. Our Dr. Pepper Big 12 game of the week. A field goal for KU in the first half, one for K-State in the second. Wildcats just picking up their ninth first down. They have 87 yards of offense to KU's 107. 160, I should say, and Marrera has it at the 42, tackled by Akib Talib. Yeah, just quick hitch passes to the outside, allowing the receivers to catch the ball and hopefully try to break a tackle so that you can make a play in the passing game and run after the catch. We haven't seen anything thrown down the field really by either team that's been of any success for them, and they've had trouble running the ball, so it really has not been an easy day for either offense to get things going on a consistent basis. KU's lost two fumbles today. K-State's had the only intercepted pass as uh, Kane with a read picked off a K-State pass earlier today. And now Everidge on the keeper, and he runs out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Now, this is one of those situations where you overload the defense. You outnumber him and your quarterback. Normally, you think he'd stand back there in the back. Well, he's a running back now. 
Clayton's going to turn into a blocker. He gets on the linebacker, Kane, and Everett goes around the corner. Nick Reed can't keep up with him, so uh, Everett's shown he's got some wheels. Everett's redshirt freshman out of Nebraska. Missed the high school up there, and got him in a third and two here at the 48 officially. KU jump, hopped right back, though. They reset. Play clock at six, and Everett on the gun. Looking for Marrera. Got Marrera. Super reception. Put it right in there, and he steps out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Well, this is something good for a redshirt freshman quarterback to step up the line of scrimmage and change the play. Bill Snyder's going to like what he sees here because Allen Everett calls his play. He knows he's got one-on-one -on -one man coverage with Marrera, his speediest receiver on the outside, and good job throw and catch. That's a nice positive play for Kansas State, and, and Everett's with a nice, nice touch on this football. 28 yards, and it's marked officially at the 25-yard line. So first and 10, we're going to call it the 24. And 124 to go in the third quarter. Again, out of the shotgun, Everett. Hands the football off. Nothing doing on that running game once again. So you come up with the big pass play. You think, all right, maybe we've got him spread out a little bit. Thomas Clayton hammered again by Nick Reed. Well, how can you not block the defensive tackle on that play? You run into the left side. You got Jamel Ashley. Look at this. Nobody even blocks him. He just comes right in here. I guess the guard decided not to get out of his stance. That's what happened there because he came right through on Clayton, did not even have a chance, and Nick Reed helped out as well. So you got to be assignment-oriented. You've got to do those things, and that's just execution. You know, you got some plays you're executing well and some plays you don't, and it looks pretty bad. As a result, loss of one, second and 11, 26. Everett keeps himself. Tries to shed a tackler. Does. Flags everywhere. It'll be a face mask, I believe. He's brought down at the 18-yard line. Well, kind of a zone read type play that a lot of teams are running in college football. You fake it inside to, to your tail back, and then the quarterback decides whether to give it or to run it himself. And this time, Everett does. He gets through the line, and I think one of the linebackers reached up, and we're going to get an incidental face mask here. That's a personal foul face mask. Wow. So that really hurts the Jayhawks. Here's the fake inside, and he decides to keep a good block on Reed. That's man doing that. And here's the face mask. Well, you've got a good running play, and you also take advantage of it more with the penalty. So K-State with a first down inside the 10-yard line. First and goal. 35 seconds to go in the quarter. They mark it at the nine-yard line for the Wildcats, trying to take the lead for the first time today. Clayton breaks it inside the five, down to the three. Stopped by Rodney Fowler. Now the crowd's starting to get into it a little bit. Well, the purple comes alive. Good job of running down here. Watch the cutback that he sees that lane right there. That's what he's trying to find, and good job of Clayton getting inside. Excuse me, taking it from the left side back to the right side. He saw the void. That's what a tailback can do when he's deep in the eye back here. Second and goal from the three. That ends the, first, or the third quarter. They'll go to the other end. Game even, but the Wildcats trying to take the lead. We're tied at three after three here in Manhattan. Pro football. A game for the ear and the eye. A three-hour carnival of color, sound, and action. NFL Sunday Ticket provides the most NFL games anywhere, up to 200 in total, and it's only available from DirecTV. For the player, victory makes the game glorious. For the fan, glory is the game. Sign up now and get four free months of DirecTV's best programming package. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. Edgar, as you take the voice of this lovely woman. This is Trump? And put it into this damn head. Why? To tell the world the benefits of Aflac with sex appeal. Brilliant, sir. I know. Now throw the switch. <laughs> if you're hurt and can't work, Aflac can help pay your bills with cash. Genius! And her? Aflac! 
Are you still being charged too much for internet service? Still waiting for a better deal? Well, your wait is over. With People PC Online, you get unlimited internet access for just $10.95 a month. And you get accelerator technology free for an entire year. That's a $60 value. Visit up to five web pages in the time it used to take to visit one and pay just $10.95 a month. Plus, our smart dialer automatically chooses the fastest, most reliable access number. Want more? You even get security tools to help protect you from spam, pop-ups, and email viruses. Compare us side-by-side -side with your current ISP. Go to peoplepc.com to try us free for 30 days. Surf up to five times faster for an entire year with free accelerator technology. All this for just $10.95 a month. But hurry, this special offer is for a limited time only. Go online or call 1-800-943-0989. People PC Online with Free Accelerator, a better way to Internet. Welcome back to Manhattan. K-State trying to break on top. Our game summary. Running game? Uh-uh. <laughs> Turnover? Yeah, had a few of those. Penalties? Yeah, we got yeah. some of those. And KU fumbled inside its own 20, set up the last K-State score. It is second and goal from the three for the Wildcats. And a flag thrown. KU clapping, which would indicate it's against the men in purple. Ball start by 89 of the offense. Penalties five yards, and it's still second down. Well, they've matched their number of penalty penalties from last week now. That's yeah. 11. Rashad Norwood on the right side. Going to get a little bit of a head start there. And can't do that. Well, they had their jumbo package in. Their big backs in the backfield. But now Bill Snyder's changing personnel. Running a different group out there. Last week in Oklahoma, we saw Io Saba come in and get a touchdown. A big fullback. Now it's Victor Mann, the fullback spot. Nelson dives, scores, touchdown, Kansas State, they lead. The pass was complete from Allen Edwards, number 27. And Nelson, for the fifth game in a row, has scored a receiving touchdown. Yeah, that's an impressive mark there. First time ever a Kansas receiver has ever done that. Fifth touchdown reception this season. This is not an easy catch either, Bell, because the ball is thrown high and outside, and Jordy Nelson reaches out for it and goes, but he's a, one of the best athletes on the team. And then stretches out the final two or three yards for the score. A point after for Jeff Snodgrass. He's 12 of 12 this year at PATs. And make it 13 of 13. And Kansas State, a leader for the first time, 10 to 3 over rival Kansas. Jordy Nelson with the TD. One taste, and you get it. Finally, affordable LASIK. Imagine life with reduced dependence on glasses and contact lenses. It's possible with the LASIK Vision Institute. Our centers offer some of the latest FDA-approved lasers and diagnostic technology, including custom technology to improve your vision. All of this at an unbeatable price. Our independent surgeons have performed over 500,000 procedures. Call now for a free information session with a LASIK counselor. Our LASIK procedures are as low as $2.99 per eye. Plus, if you call right now, you can receive interest-free financing. That's right, 0% financing for up to one year. LASIK from $2.99 per eye plus 0% financing. Call 1-800-620-7560 now to act on this incredible offer. That number again is 1-800-620-7560. 1-800-620-7560. The LASIK Vision Institute. Experience, commitment, technology, and affordability. Kansas State on top, 10-3. What a reception by Nelson. What hands. No doubt about it. Jumps out there, shows athleticism, makes the catch, and gets the final two or three yards here for the score for the Wildcats. And Excellent athlete. 
yeah. the former sprint champion at sure. Kansas State High School. And he caps off the Hyundai scoring drive, 10 plays, 75 yards, and a record fifth straight game with a TD catch to start the season. The kickoff by Kansas State. Higgins steps across the 25 and is stopped near the 27 and a half yard line. Now it's up to Kansas to see if they can get their offense going. Williams made the tackle on the play. There's a look at Kyle and the Jayhawks. Well, that was a pretty good drive, Bill. 75 yeah. yards, you know? Today it's we, monumental. We've been waiting for one of those. <laughs> well, the fans certainly like it. They're into this ball game now. Going to make it difficult for Kansas to, to work out there. See what the Hawks come up with. Brian Luke didn't get the start today. Came on in relief for Barman. Back on his 20. Swarm hit and incomplete near the 35-yard line. K-State bringing the pressure defensively now. That was Siler. Now nothing happened in there. Good job in the secondary of coverage with Kansas State, but they did put pressure on Luke this time. Watch at the top of your screen. You're going to have Siler number 34 come right out through. Nobody touches him, and actually Siler's at the bottom, and the linebacker comes in. 47 to go in the ball game. Kansas State scoring in the second play of the quarter. And now KU, second and 10 from its own 27 for the Jayhawks. Here's Green, Clark Green, senior out of Tampa, Florida, tackled by Maurice Mack. And he was the starter today, but Cornish has gotten the bulk of the work. Cornish 16 carries 63 yards. Green getting his second carry of the day. Well, number 24, Maurice Max, made a lot of tackles all over the field today. Pretty good job here hanging on and getting Green around the lower part of his body and just making a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Got a pretty good ball game, I think, Maurice Mack. Sets up a third and six for Kansas on its own 31-yard line. Luke. Incomplete bouncing around. Deflected and drops to the turf near the 43-yard line. Yeah, trying to hit the quick slant pass for the first down. Good coverage. It's manned up on the outside. They've got press coverage, and this is a tough ball for a quarterback to throw in there because the receivers have to get separation, and that did not occur here for Brian Luke. These receivers, when they came inside, unable to get the separation they needed, and he couldn't thread the needle. So they'll have to kick it away on a fourth and six. That'll bring on Kyle Tucker, the sophomore punter. Tucker today averaging 41 yards. And a 66-yarder, I believe it was, on his last one. So we'll see what he comes up with here. And now Moreras shading the sun, trying to keep it out of his eyes. Couldn't see the ball. Never Good saw it. Saw. See it. KU trying to run it down, and they will as they down it inside the five at the three-yard line. Now that sun Whoa. is coming directly from the south here on this football field, and the players, especially the punt returners, looking up. They just can't see the football. I think it happened to, Char to Charles Gordon early in, in his football game, and there he is trying to you know, hold the sun out. Then as you start moving around, you don't have the same ability to do so because you got to catch the football. Takes his hand down, loses the football, and where is it at? 63-yarder as... They talk about flipping the field. They've done it. Our first downline brought to you by Overstock.com. Visit Overstock.com today and start saving. It's all about the O. First and 10, the ball on the three for Kansas State. And Everett's just trying to do anything he can to give him a little bit more room to work with out of their own end zone. I think you talked that, said that right, trying to get some room. You know, you're not thinking 97-yard drive from here, but you'd like to get a first down at least, or at least get out of that end zone because if, Kansas defense continues to play like they've played most of the day except for the last drive. You know, your punter is going to be in a difficult situation back there in his end zone punting out of a, a tight space. Now, a game like this, 10-3, where just one touchdown scored, and we only had one significant drive today. That was K-State last time. KU's got to be figuring, hey, we got to pin them here. We're going to need a short field to score with. Clayton 
fights his way to the five-yard line. He's uh, stopped by Tim Allen, defensive tackle for Kansas. Well, this is a run stunt by Kansas defense. They're doing a good job of just attacking the line of scrimmage. Watch the right side of his line of scrimmage. He comes up here, and then we bring the other linebacker around to make a tackle in the backfield. This is what's called a little scissor stunt. You got one guy taking up two blockers, and then Reed is supposed to make the tackle in the backfield. Good job of making contact, and then his buddies finish up. Third and eight. Key one for Kansas State. 12.37 to go in the ballgame. Everett, short drop, looping, and it is incomplete, nearly picked off. That's a great job of coverage on the outside. I think that that young man did a nice yeah, job out there. Tlaib, Yaqib Tlaib, the freshman out of Richardson Berkner High School, the Dallas Fort Worth area, just turns and runs, and then he turns back and watches, it, looks for the football on the inside, and Marrera cannot get a, get past him. Good job uh, by Tlaib. So now, Rayer in his own end zone. It's not a, remember last week in Oklahoma, he never found the end zone. They snapped it out for a safety. He's there and ready, and he's been fine so far today. Fourth down and eight. Kansas. Mm -hmm. Much pressure. Nice kick by Rayer at midfield. Gordon. Oh, mama! Hit immediately after he received the football. Yaman figures. There's some coverage. We'll be right back after this brief timeout on FSN. The FSN Pro Football Preview. You've got questions, our guys have the answers. Get a first-hand look at the weekend's biggest matchups. Join Chris Myers, Jay Glazer, Tim Brown, and Jason Seahorn as they take you into the trenches with interviews and in-depth analysis. Finally, they seem to have a defense that can back them up. It's the weekly preview show that can't be missed. The FSN Pro Football Preview, Sunday. This is Fuel TV the network dedicated to the world of action sports. Featuring skateboarding, surfing, BMX, freestyle moto, snowboarding, and wakeboarding. Oh, I wanna go. Only on Fuel TV can you experience the energy and danger that define action sports. 